Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're going to be talking about how to create any character, any creature, anything that you want to do. How do we start the blocking process? How do we start a sculpt? Well, in order to do that, we're going to have to jump first into Photoshop to explain some basic concepts and then we're going to jump into Seabrush so that I can show you how I would block in something like the character that I'm about to show you. However, before we do that, I just want to remind you guys that we have new courses available over there, over there, right here. Whoa. Right here, <laughs> new course available and the latest one, the stylized character creation for ZBrush has a 90% off that you can check down here on the link. It's only gonna be available for the next couple of days. So if you want to create characters similar to the style of like League of Legends and World of Warcraft and stuff like that, this is the course to check. We also have the mech course available. So you can check that down here on Skillshare as well. Now let's jump onto our main character. So I got this concept online. I actually don't know who the artist is. Let me see if I can look this up, Nick Despain. Nick Despain is the artist that we're gonna be uh, using his work to learn. And um, as you can see, like you, when you take a look at the character like this, one of the first things that you might think is, how the hell am I gonna be like modeling this? And the reason why I wanted to start today here inside of Photoshop is because it's a very important concept that we need to understand about anything in the real world. So the concept that I mean is that everything in the real world, in our, in our world, and of course on the virtual world, lives on a 3D lives on a 3D space. There we go. Let's make this a little bit smaller and let's go wrath. Perfect. So uh, anything that we have on the on the world has three dimensions, right? Like if I grab this little Tim Horton cup, we have height, we have depth, and of course we have width. In this case, it's cylindrical and stuff, but we have a 3D like solution. There's a, a school of thought that says that we can pretty much create boxes around everything. So if this was a giant like sculpture and we had to ship it, there would be a specific volume that we could create for this character that would encompass, well, the whole element. This is what we normally know inside the 3D packages as the bounding box, is the volume that the object occupies. So even though there's nothing on this area, the volume would still extend because of the um, spikes that we have here on the on the arms and stuff. So the bounding box is really important, but we, we wanna go a step further. And I'm gonna introduce you to three shapes that we're gonna be using quite a bit, which are the cylinder, the sphere, and of course, the cube. Okay, if you've never taken a VisComp class, a visual communication class, that's one of the classes that I strongly recommend everyone takes because it's a great way to understand how to how to show form in our elements. Okay, so usually a character like this will have what I call the three main masses: the head, the torso, and the pelvis. In the case of the head, this is pretty much like a cylinder. You can see the cylinder here for the neck, and then we have a sphere for the head, and this will be like a plane like this. The jaw is very similar. It's also like a sort of like triangular looking shape like this. Okay. So we got cylinder, a sphere over here, probably going to have a sphere down here as well. And then the flat parts of the mouth up top. Then the second mass would be, of course, the rib cage, which I normally like to use a sphere again to uh, describe it. The third mass would be the pelvis, which is this one right here. And of course, the pelvis and the, um, what's the word? The pelvis and the chest will connect through the abdomen, which, as you can see right here, we can very easily describe as a cylinder. We then have sockets, and these sockets, I'm actually gonna like lower the opacity for this layer. I create a new layer here. And these sockets will be the sockets for the arms, which again, the shoulder can be described as a sphere. The arm can be described as a cylinder, right? The elbow can be another sphere. The forearm can be <laughs> my God, another <laughs> ah, another cylinder. And then the hand can be a box, okay? That way, you can imagine the same thing happening on the other side. We can start creating, as you can see, a very basic skeleton, a very basic deconstruction. This is a method that I like to refer as like a deconstruction where we're simplifying, think about like Picasso, where he took like shapes and simplified them to the most basic forms. This is what we're doing here. Tails are just big cylinders, to be honest. So we start with a sphere right here. We go all the way over here. We're going to have, let's say, one sphere, two sphere, and three sphere. Of course, over here, we're going to have a very simple box representing the main shape of the, uh, of the tail. For the hind legs, we're going to have, of course, another sphere here on the pelvis. Let's 
go a little bit pinkish like this. We have our main leg, a sphere for the knee. This is the lower leg. That's the ankle. This is the metatarsals. And then the foot can be just a very simple box. And finally, just because we have this uh, extra accessory, have the spikes right here, which again, in a very similar like fashion to the, um, what's the word, to the tail, we can simplify by creating these elements. So as you can see, we've divided the character into sections. That's the first like secret that I wanna share with you. When we see a big element, a big character, a big monster, and we try to understand it as a whole, it can become a little bit complicated or complex. If we break it down into sections, the tail, the arms, the legs, the pelvis, the abdomen, the head, it's a lot easier to process for our brains and for our sculpting process. So this is what we would normally do to generate a, such, a, uh, such a result. Like I would do a very basic blocking of how to build up this character right here. Now I'm gonna jump into ZBrush and um, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. I've actually done this instead of Maya and instead of Blender, which is like basic cubes and spheres and stuff. But there's a tool inside of ZBrush that's really, really, really good, which is the C spheres. And C spheres are one of those things that not everyone teaches and I don't know why, because they're so, so, so good. I use them all the time. So I'm gonna click the C sphere right here. I'm gonna draw it on my, um, on my screen. I'm gonna press the letter T to go into edit mode. You can see the character is facing me, so I'm gonna go to a side view. I'm gonna press X to make sure that we have symmetry turned on. And this first C sphere, this is very important, the first C sphere that you create should always be like here on the abdomen, okay? It's, the, it's like, the, like the main sphere that we're gonna start uh, everything from. So I'm gonna draw one sphere on the top or on the front, and I'm gonna draw, click outside, always click outside to clear the selection, and one on the back. So this is the pelvis. Now, some people like to use, um, like spotlights and stuff like that. I'm actually just gonna use a little bit of see-through here and you can see how I can match my elements. So I'm gonna press W to move my abdomen right here and then move this one up here. I'm gonna go with this. Uh, I'm gonna scale this with the letter E to make the torso or the abdomen, or in this case, the torso a little bit bigger. I'm also gonna make the abdomen a little bit bigger. W now to move it a little bit and that way I'm capturing the like general silhouette of the character. Let's turn on the, the picture so we can see it as well. And as you can see here, what I'm focusing the most or what I need to do is I need to capture the main silhouette of the character, the main shape. I'm gonna press Q again, go to the front, and I'm gonna draw one more, which is gonna be the neck, and one more. Let's go to the side, let's match this again. Definitely need to scale this up. Same for this one, and this one's gonna go here. Now, usually when I'm creating my silhouettes, I don't like to go all the way to the like to the edge of the silhouette, because this is supposed to be like the armature, right? So we're gonna be building on top of this thing. And sometimes when we try to capture every single like precise thing, it becomes a little bit complicated. It becomes like a little bit difficult to do so. I'm gonna go now, I'm gonna create one more right here, which is gonna be like the main shape of the head and one down here, which is gonna be the main shape of the jaw. So you can see that we're capturing like the main, again, where the brain would be and where the jawline would be. This is where I would normally stop. If you want, you can add more stuff, but I'm gonna show you a different trick once we go out there. Now, here's a quick trick for the tail. I'm gonna to go to the back. I'm gonna draw a small sphere like that. Careful there, you need to click outside and then draw another sphere, there we go. So I'm gonna draw a small sphere, and then with W, I'm gonna push the sphere all the way to where it ends, which is right around there. And I'm actually gonna scale this down a little bit more so that it matches the proper like size. And then with Q, you can draw one and two more spheres. And with W, just move them. And with E, scale them to create this whole thing. Now, if this is the first time you're seeing C spheres and you're like, how the hell does this work? Remember, we have the uh, courses available, Skillshare down here. You can get a free trial for Skillshare. And uh, we have a lot of super courses going on. Now here on the top part, I'm gonna draw one more sphere, which is gonna represent the shoulder. As you can see right there. I'm gonna press W again, Q, sorry, to draw. Draw one more. I'm gonna push this back to where the shoulder is. However, from a 3D view, I actually need to push this out a little bit, right? To give the character enough room to, well, to move. I'm gonna create a new sphere right here, move it all the way to the front, and this one is probably gonna be going inside. He's, he's probably like this, right? Like with e, with the elbows like pointing, uh, pointing out. So that way we get that specific effect.
There we go. I'm not going to do the hands. I don't like doing hands with C-spheres. You can do them. You can do it like individual fingers, but it becomes really small, really difficult to control. So I prefer to keep my stuff as simple at this, uh, at this stage. What I am going to do are the spikes that we have right here. So I'm going to go to the part right here. W. Move them to the, to the very point there. Oh, scale it down. And then move this up and same process that we did with the with the tail we add two more and we move them of course the more like uh the more spheres you add the smoother the curvature can be as you can see right there no need to go super precise because again this is just a blocking this is just a general like uh, approximation of what we want we're going to be doing a lot of scope this is just how to start a project now this right here, if you remember, that's the hip, right? Like that's the, the hip layer. So I need to add with a Q, I need to add one more sphere right there, which is gonna be my, my pelvis muscle. And then this one's gonna go forward towards the knee. And knees are usually pushing out like this. Make it a little bit smaller. We're gonna do one more there, push it back. That's the metatarsal, or sorry, the, the lower leg. And then do one more. And then this one goes forwards. That's the metatarsal. And again, the finger, I'm going to leave them alone for just a second. And we're going to get this. Now, here is where, uh, depending on the production pipeline that you're in, your rigger will tell you, hey, like this is not going to work. Like it's going to be very, very difficult to rig this character like this, right? And uh, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video, but whenever you're blocking something and you need to decide what this is going to be for, if it's going to be for production, then usually a T pose and a pose, that sort of poses are the ones that we go for. This one, for instance, he's kind of like crouching down. So the ideal thing would be to do it in a more relaxed state. Sometimes they do it like, like if they, if they were floating on water with the arms, like slightly um, straightened. And that, that makes it a lot easier for the rigger to place all of the joints. You could potentially rig it like this. Like it, it's not the end of the world to rig it like this. But you can see, for instance, here between the, the upper leg and the lower leg, it would be very difficult to sculpt. So I personally, once I get this, I would personally go to this guy and with rotation, I would rotate the leg back down like this so that I have more room. Even the arms, I would probably rotate the arms up like this and probably rotate them like forward a little bit just so that I have a little bit more room to work with, okay? But the thing is, I've already blocked in the proper proportions, which is always one of those things that people um, struggle quite a bit with. So that's it. Now that we have this, now we can jump into our Dynamesh. So if we press the letter, let's let's get rid of see-through for just a second. If we press the letter A over here, we're going to get a preview of how this thing is going to be constructed. And right now, this thing looks really good, except for the legs, but this thing looks really good. I'm actually going to go to the legs, as I mentioned. I'm going to rotate them down just because I don't want to have this sort of effect. We could also rotate like the whole torso up a little bit. It's going to destroy a little bit of the proportions that we have, but it shouldn't be that much of a deal. And we're going to get a nice proportion. Okay, so that's what I would do. I'm not going to do it here because I want to show you the full blocking first, uh, but that's what I would do for production. Now, I'm going to go to adaptive skin. I'm going to say make adaptive skin to create this and convert this into an actual skin that we can start manipulating. And this is the skin that I would start working with. There's two more things that I want to add here. If we get this thing where it was supposed to be, you can see that we're missing the face, right? Like there's a, a big like shape on the face. This like axe beak thing is really important and it would be very cool if we already had it, right? So I'm going to go to Subtool. I'm going to append a new cube and I'm going to bring this cube right here. And then what I'm going to do, let's push it a little bit in. There we go. Is I'm going to dynamesh this cube. I'm going to do a quick save because I'm going to use a tool that usually crashes things. I'm going to use the knife curve. The knife curve will, as the name implies, cut the elements and it will allow me, as you can see right here, very quickly to create a cut that captures the general silhouette of the character. Okay, so I'm just cutting all of the pieces that I don't need. And there we go. And now we have a very basic blocky element of the head. Of course, I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to do double tap alt to cut that, that out. And as you can see, we get a very, very nice effect right there. Of course, we press the letter X and we can use our move brush to clean a little bit of the silhouette. But remember, this is just supposed to be a, a basic 
like construction because from the silhouette is where we're going to be like creating or combining everything else. For instance, we have the spike there. Might as well already add it with the little geometry that we have here. That's fine. And as you can see, we create this very, very cool looking shape that allows us to get a very good idea of how the character is going to look, right? Like it's a very basic blocking, but believe me, guys, this blocking, when a director or a producer sees this blocking and they're like, yes, that's the shape that we're going for. That's the form. That's the silhouette. That's what we want, right? So let's do something very similar with the tail. I'm going to have to move the uh, image here a little bit because we're not going to be able to match it. There we go. So we're going to say append another cube. I'm going to bring this over here. And again, with my cut brush, I'm just going to cut the general shape of the, of the tail, just like that. That's all we need. Okay. A lot of people think that the blocking should be like really clean, really finished. No, it's a blocking. It's supposed to be a blocking. I, I remember when I was in school and I had like drawing uh, lessons, one of the things that the teachers uh, told us to do was to do uh, thumbnail images, right? Like just very quick sketches of your character, of your design. And some people would polish, like some people would call these things right here thumbnails. That's not the thumbnail. That's a drawing. That's a finished drawing. A thumbnail would be something like, like I'm gonna just doing like a very, very quick silhouette. And it's like, yeah, there's gonna be like a spike right here. And that's it. Like that sketch, five seconds, that's a thumbnail. That's a very quick sketch just to get an idea of a silhouette. This is a finished drawing, a finished design. Like you can sculpt things from that design. So the same thing happens here with the, with the blockings. We don't want these blockings to be perfect sculptures. We just want them to have all of the necessary information about the main volumes of the, of the character. Now that we have this, I'm going to get rid of the see-through again. Now we can go with the hands and the, and the feet. And again, if we want to really like get this into a blocking stage, a simple cube should be more than enough. So I'm going to position this. I'm going to make it thinner. I'm just going to position this in such a way that it represents the volume of the hand. And again, this is a perfect way to evaluate whether or not the hands and the feet that we have are uh, like nicely done. The feet, as you can see here, it might be a good idea to rotate them slightly so that they follow the sort of like the same direction that we have on the, on the hands. And feet are usually a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to push this a little bit more. There we go. And then we just go uh, C plugin, Subtool Master, and we mirror this to the other side. And that's it. Finally, the last thing that we need to do is just combine all of this. So Subtool, Merge, Merge Visible. And by doing this, we've successfully created a blocking of the character Okay, a blocking of the creature that we can start using to build up the anatomy, the details, the scales, the plating, the eyes, the teeth, everything. This thing right here could even be used to do a very quick rig. Like you can throw this to a rigger and they'll like use it and get like a general idea of how the movement is going to work. Because even though it's super simple geometry, it gives you an idea of the proportions, of the size, of the connections. And that's what we want on the early stages. One of the reasons why the production pipeline works the way it does is we don't have to wait until the very end to know if something's going to work or not. I can do this in 30 minutes, like we just did here, 20 minutes. I can show this to an animator and he can get an, a general idea of, of whether or not this is going to move and animate properly. If we detect that something is not working at this stage, then it is worth it to go back to the drawing board, correct the design and fix it before we go all the way through the production pipeline and find out later down the line in the animation department that something is not working. So yeah, this is it, guys. This is all you need to start working. This is all you need to start creating your character. And um, eventually, like if you look for creatures, you're going to see this sort of thing repeating quite a bit. We, of course, have humanoid meshes like this, where using a base mesh, like a very basic human base mesh is a perfect idea. But there will be situations when you get some more complex creatures, especially when they have like a lot of spikes and stuff. Again, think about the main volumes. Where is the head? Where is the torso? Where are the claws, the tail? Think about where all of these elements are. And and try to break this down into the simple elements so that you too, you too can create your own uh, either C-sphere or just like basic shapes uh, blocking and start working from here. So that's it for this one, guys. Make sure to check out the courses that we have available over here if you want. Make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe. That really helps the channel. And if there's any more suggestions that you would like to see on this channel, please let me know. Stay tuned for the next live stream, which is going to be on Monday. Make sure you hit the little bell icon so that you get that notification. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Have a great date. I'll date, not date. Or if you're going on a date, then have a great date as well. <laughs> but have a great day, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.